guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Shauna, and today I'm going to be doing a review on a new product from Becca. And this is the Becca Beach Tint Shimmer Souffle. Now, I picked this up from Sephora for 27 US dollars for 0.2 ounces. And they do carry six different shades. So not a really wide selection of shades, but they do have six. Um, so the packaging. The packaging, it comes in this little glass packaging. You can see the product from underneath, and it's got a silver cap, which is made out of plastic. It's not metal. Um, and then when you first initially open it up, and I'll leave a clip somewhere, but it's you can see the pigment of the blush kind of marbled in with the shimmer. And then you swirl it in, and then you just it just kind of blends together and combines and mixes up to get this beautiful shimmery cheek color. So according to Sephora's website, let's just see what it is. This is a four-in-one air-whipped souffle formula that adds a flush of color to cheeks. What it does. This lightweight formula packs four must-have qualities into one formula. A powder to add a pop of color, a stain to give staying power, an illuminating highlighter, and a cream to deliver a flawless finish. Water resistant, each pot combines Becca's best-selling beach tint with a shimmering skin perfecter, perfecter for effortlessly buildable, complexion-enhancing color, soothing hydration, and a youthful glow. So, as far as the claims, I do agree with everything that they just said. It is extremely light. It is a light whipped texture. Um, it does dry down to a powdery finish, so it's very smooth and velvety and kind of powdery on the skin. Um, it does last a very long time. It does seem to stain your skin and, and last. Um, and as far as hydration, I'm not sure about that. I'm so greasy anyway that I wouldn't even notice. So, um, but if they say that it does, I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Um, so my initial thoughts about this product when I first saw it in the store, I did have a couple of concerns. One, I was concerned that it wasn't really going to be pigmented enough to really show up on my complexion. And at the moment, I'm about a MAC NC, NC30, NC35. Um, and the second concern I had was that it was just going to be just too, too shimmery. Um, I do have oily skin, but I do prefer some sort of radiance in my skin. I don't like really overly matte, like so matte that it's flat skin. I definitely want it to be somewhat, not glowy, but yeah, kind of glowy. I mean, kind of radiant, not greasy, but glowy. Um, so when I first tried this, one of the first things I noticed was the scent. This does have a very fragrant watermelon scent, and I'm assuming that the other ones smell like their corresponding shade. Like the guava one probably smells like guava. The lychee one I did purchase, and I returned it before I had a chance to, or before I even thought to sniff it, which I regret, so I can't tell you about that. But this one that I have here, which is watermelon moonstone, does have a very fragrant watermelon scent, so I love that. Um, so when I first applied it, I did notice that it blended out just effortlessly. It was so velvety smooth. It dried down to a powder-like finish, um, and it was very, very blendable. And the color, I was very pleasantly surprised, but it did show up quite nicely on my skin. So I was worried that it wasn't going to be pigmented enough, and it definitely was. But as far as pigmentation goes, that's going to vary widely on your personal skin tone and the color that you select. So I would definitely, definitely recommend going to a store and swatching them on your skin. I don't think really that it's something that you could really pick out online. Um, I mean, maybe in some instances, but I mean, for me, there were definitely certain shades that just weren't showing up on my skin, and then there were other ones that were showing up fine. So the one that I picked up is showing up on my skin fine. Um, as far as it being long wearing, I agree with it. it is definitely very long wearing. Um, it does seem to wear quite a long time and I've worn this outside in the heat and it is so hot out where I'm, I mean, I live in the desert, so it's a really dry, arid, hot, 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 hot environment. And through sweat and everything, it held up. So it is long wearing. Um, as far as shimmer goes, I said in my last video that it wasn't overly shimmery and I think what I meant was Glitter. It's not shimmery in like a glittery or really metallic-y kind of way. It's a very soft, subtle, glowy shimmer. So I don't 
like you you won't see it reflecting or anything like that you know like like a disco ball or anything it's not disco ball shimmery it's just a very subtle sheen so it is a very pretty glow that I don't find to be too obnoxious on my um, oily skin when I use the proper mattifiers so um, it's not overly shimmery but one thing that I did notice about this upon first application was is it did seem to accentuate my pores I've got large pores and this just made them look huge um, and the first few times I applied it I used my fingers and when you use your fingers you're just laying the product down just on the very top layer of the skin so you're not this sounds gross but you're not getting like into the pore so it's just accentuating your pores so I did try several different ways to apply this to see if I could kind of mitigate the effects of the of the pore problem but um, what I did was is I tried these three different brushes. The first brush I tried is this one here from e.l.f. and this is the small stippling brush and this one I did not find to really pick up as much product as I needed. I mean you could, I swirled it in the product and I could hardly see any of the product on the bristles and I certainly didn't see enough to actually show up on my skin so this brush I wouldn't recommend. Um, and then I tried a natural hair bristle brush because sometimes natural bristles will pick up product a little bit better than synthetic ones that's not the case with this. This is a Hakuhodo brush. I don't know what number because they don't number them and I got this ages ago. But I tried this with it and this one, same thing. It didn't really pick up much of the product. I didn't see hardly any on the bristles. Nothing really transferred onto the skin so this one I wouldn't recommend. Um, finally, I tried this one here from Real Techniques and this is the Real Techniques contour brush. This was the best way that I found to apply this for me. And I love this brush with this product because it's small, so it's small enough to, to get in the product. And here, let's just swirl some in there. I don't know if you can see that, but the bristles have turned pink, so it definitely picks up enough of the product to transfer onto the brush and enough to transfer onto your skin. I have so much on right now, I don't know. Well, let's just go ahead. You could never have too much blush, right? So anyway, um, this is definitely my preferred method for applying this product. And when you use the brush, you're kind of buffing it into those pores and getting the shimmer like deeper in there so it doesn't it doesn't accentuate them as much. So I've definitely found that applying it with this brush has kind of solved the pore issue for me. So if you've tried this product and you had the same problem like your pores just looked huge, try using a brush like this and really like kind of buff it in because it definitely 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 makes it you know much better and much smoother looking and it and it it doesn't accentuate your pores like it does with your fingers um, another thing that I noticed about this product is it does seem to accentuate texture and bumpiness like at the moment I have a little bit of bumpiness going on on my cheek right here and it does seem to kind of be highlighting those problems so if you've got um, bumpiness, if you've got acne, if you've got pitting or anything like that then you might want to steer clear of this product because it does seem to accentuate and highlight those issues. Um, and another thing worth noting is, and this is all perfect personal preference, um, I personally like a bit of a glow just on the tops of my cheeks here. Um, but this, I mean, you're applying over your entire cheek, so your whole cheek is going to be glowy. So if you like that effect, then you are going to love this because you're just going to get some serious, like, beautiful, radiant glowiness going on. Um, another con I would say about this product is, is there's something not completely natural about it. I mean, it dries to a powdery finish and it definitely kind of appears a little powdery on the skin. Um, it's beautiful and it's pretty, but it's not completely natural. I find it, I can't explain it and I can't put my finger on it, but there's definitely something a little artificial about it. And earlier today, my mom came by the house to drop off a birthday present. It's my birthday on Tuesday, but she's gonna, we're both gonna be working, so we're not gonna see each other. And when she came by, I was wearing this. I didn't have that much. I just had a little bit of foundation around, you know, concealer, a little, very little bit just in the center. And I didn't have any lip product on. I just had lip balm on and, you know, a really neutral eye. And when she came by, she, the first thing she said was, is, you're wearing a ton of makeup. And I'm like, really? I'm not really wearing that much. And she says, no, it just looks like you've got a ton on. 
And I'm like, well, is it my cheek? She's like, yeah, it's just, it just looks like heavy. So it does have kind of a powdery finish and it's not completely 100% natural. Not necessarily a bad thing. If you like that sort of look, then you will love this. But again, it's just personal preference. So my overall review of this product is, is I would probably give it about a seven out of 10. I do think it's a beautiful product. I think if you select the right shade for your skin tone, you're gonna get some good pigmentation. It's got great longevity and you do get a really beautiful glow. Um, I personally probably won't repurchase this simply because it is pricey. It's $27 for 0.2 ounces, so you're not getting a ton of product for your dollar, and I do feel like I've gone through quite a bit already, and I haven't had this for very long. So um, it is an expensive product, and because I'm so oily, I don't prefer the whole cheek to be as shimmery as this is, but for the right person, this would be a beautiful product. So I would recommend this for someone that's got a drier skin, someone that has smooth skin, and someone that likes that shimmery, glowy look. If you've got acne, if you've got... Don't you hate when you're in the middle of a sentence and then your battery dies? Anyway, I would um, clear of this if you have any kind of texture issues. If you've got acne or bumpiness, or pitting or a lot of scars and I would definitely stay away from this. If you've got large pores and don't want to accentuate them, I would definitely recommend applying it with a brush. Not this particular brush, but any similar brush. So anyway, those are my final thoughts. That is my review on the Becca Beach Tint Shimmer Souffle. Um, hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you've tried it, leave your comments down below and let everybody else know what you thought about it. That'd be awesome. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!